Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to talk to you guys about Caden Life, which is a free video editor originally meant for Linux, but over time they've gone ahead and developed a stable version for Windows as well. If you check the website Alternative 2, it's the top rated alternative for Adobe Premiere. So I figured it would be a good idea to go ahead and take another look at Caden Live and see how they've changed things. So in this video specifically, in this video specifically, I wanted to show you guys seven settings that you should customize before you really start working on your projects for Caden Live. And I'd like to do some tutorials about Caden Live in the coming days to show off some of the things you can do within it. So the first setting you may want to customize is the color scheme. There's an option here for a color theme. And you can see they have a whole bunch of default colors. I do like Breeze Dark, but if you want to play around with some other dark themes, you could try something like Obsidian Coast. There's also light themes such as Honeycomb here. Just note that if you stare at a white screen too much, it may hurt your eyes a bit over time. So a lot of people like to prefer darker themes. But yeah, you can go ahead and customize it. Pick whatever theme you want here. It's like one click literally to do it. And they have many color schemes out of the box. So the second setting you may want to choose is open last project. So you can have Caden Live open the most recently edited project uh, as soon as you launch Caden Live, which saves you the step of having to manually go to file open uh, whenever you want to open up your last project. So you can customize this by going to the settings menu and configure Caden Live. In this configure menu, we want to go to the miscellaneous menu and you can just check open last project on startup. Next, you may want to choose project defaults. So when you import your first clip to the timeline that has different resolution and FPS settings, then your project defaults, it will automatically notify you about if you'd like to change it for specifically this project. But if you don't want to always do that because you know what you usually record in, then you can go over to the project defaults also in the configure menu. And you can choose HD 1080p resolution at 30 FPS or 60 FPS if you prefer. Or if you're working in lower resolutions, you can uh, choose the same frame rates, but at that 720p resolution. Alternatively, if you have a really good camera, you can go up to 4K resolutions and you can select from that menu. So choose whatever setting you want and then go ahead and hit apply. So next up, proxy clips. So proxy clips can be set up in the proxy clips menu here. And what proxy clips will do is that when you are editing your video and the source video has a really high resolution, like let's say 1080p or 4K resolution, um, and you're working on a weaker computer, then having those videos play back in the timeline may slow down your computer a bit. So with proxy clips, whenever you have a high resolution clip in the timeline, it will create a shrunken down version of that video that will show up in this preview window for you to edit the video in. So you'll actually be looking at a low res version of the original source material so that Caden Live will take up less system resources. Uh, while you're editing your videos, uh, DaVinci Resolve, and I'm sure Adobe Premiere has this feature as well. So if you're editing your videos and you get slow down in your project, this is a handy setting to enable. So I would check that for generate videos larger than a thousand pixels. And if you need to, you could do images as well. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply there. So number five, separate audio channels, and I'm actually going to rewrite this. So what the separate audio channels does is that when an audio track from an imported clip or really any clip you're working on in the timeline, has both a left channel and a right channel. It'll show the audio waveforms for both of those channels individually, rather than one audio waveform for both channels. So this would be a useful setting if the left and the right channel audio are not in sync with each other. For instance, if the audio is supposed to be more on the left side when a viewer plays back your video, then you could actually see that, oh, the audio on the left side is quieter or louder than the audio on the right side. And in the case that the audio should be the same loudness on both left and right, then you can make sure that that is the case. So we can go ahead and check that. So just to show what the separate channels thing looks like, I'm going to put a clip into the timeline that actually has some audio waveform and we can see right channel and left channel shows up there. But without that setting, uh, we would just get one audio waveform. So the advantage of not having separate channels is that obviously, because it only needs to show one, you can make that one audio waveform look larger in your timeline. However, without separate channels checked, you won't be able to see if there's a difference between the left channel and right channel audio data. So number six, default apps for image editing, which if you're using free apps, is probably going to be GIMP, and audio editing, which is likely going to be Audacity. So you can set these by going over to the environment and then default apps. So this will be handy if you ever right click on an image and hit edit 
so that you can open the image and the external program for editing straight from within Caden Live without needing to uh, go to the start menu in Windows or the equivalent if you're working on Linux still. So we can set the image editing program here by going to change and navigating to find the folder. So in this case, that's going to be program files, GIMP2, binary, and then GIMP2.10 there. So hit OK. And then for audio editing, it's more or less the same process. So C drive, program files, x86, audacity, and then locating the executable file. So I brought an image into Caden Live just to show this. We can right click on this and do edit clip. And then when we do that, it's going to open in our external image editor program. In this case, that's GIMP. So that same image gets loaded into GIMP. So with this image, we can uh, draw on it inside of GIMP, go up to file, overwrite it. And then it will be re-imported back into Caden Live with the changes made. So by setting your default image editor, it becomes really easy to do that with image clips and also with audio clips as well if you add Audacity or a similar program as the default audio editor. Okay, so lastly, number seven, hardware acceleration. If we go up to the settings menu and run the config wizard, you can see here that there are options for VAPI hardware acceleration and NVIDIA hardware acceleration. So number seven, hardware acceleration. If you go up to the settings menu and do run config wizard, uh, then you can click on this check hardware acceleration button to see if your computer has hardware which is compatible with VAP -E hardware acceleration or NVIDIA hardware acceleration. So if you click on this, you can see if you have any hardware encoders found and you can enable these as it corresponds to your computer. So if your computer supports either of these, you're obviously going to get a bit better results while you're editing videos. Since pretty much by definition, video editing would be the definition of a graphics program. So if you can enable these on your computer, you'll definitely want them. And when you check them, you can go ahead and hit OK. But yeah, once again, not every computer will support it. So that's going to be it for this introductory video into Caden Live. Seven settings that you may want to go ahead and customize for yourself before you really get into working with Caden Live. So I've been Chris, that's going to be it for this video, and I'll see you guys in my future content.